Hey, what's up guys? RJ here, back with another video. This is the third episode in the Practical Print series, where we take a look at the process of producing a useful 3D printed item from the inception all the way to the finished product. I'll try to share my work and thought processes and hopefully answer the what, how, and whys along the way. In this episode, we design and print an extension for the top plate for the newer aluminum DSLR camera cage. I was um, kind of shopping on Amazon and I noticed this cage and it looked like it would be a great, light, affordable camera cage. But unfortunately, once I got it, I discovered that the cage was too short to use with my camera and the 717AH quick adapters that I use, which is also episode two. So I needed to raise the roof on that sucker, and that's exactly what we'll do. So are you ready? Let's get started. Welcome back. I've already talked about the what and the why for this build. Now let's talk about the how. This is a pretty easy build. Um, you'll need a CAD program. Uh, I'm using Fusion 360, which I love, and I think you'll love too, once you get familiar with it. Uh, you'll also need a 3D printer, well duh, and some three by 35 millimeter screws. This is one of those builds I talked about in episode two, where I don't even bother sketching out anything on paper. I just head straight into Fusion. I think in this case, there's only one really big design consideration, and that's tightness. You wanna make everything as precise as possible. You don't want much, if any, slop in the holes the screws go through. You don't wanna make them too wide or the placement of the holes. You want to make them as precise as possible. That way you end up with a very tight um, extension, no wobble in it. Because no matter how tight you get those screws, if, if the extensions are loose, chances are that top plate is going to wiggle a little bit. Now speaking of precision, the more precision an object needs to have, the, the more chances are that you're going to fail in your design iterations, your first design iterations. Just like I explained in episode two, don't be afraid to fail. Um, it took me five iterations to get these little, this little simple bracket right. Just perfect. So also don't be afraid to experiment. Uh, take some design risks. If your design fails, don't give up. Determine why it fails, make adjustments, and try again. All right, that's the word for the day. Try again. All right, back on topic. While most of the time strength is a critical design consideration, uh, at least in the things that I design or wind up making, I'm not sure it's the case here because we have steel bolts that run through the top plate in through the extensions and into the bottom arms. The top plate's aluminum, the bolts are steel, and the bottom, the arms are aluminum. So even if that plastic were to fracture, I can't see how that plate would come off of the arms. I don't see how it would get loose. I printed mine in ABS but I'm pretty sure PLA will work just fine. So I guess it's that time, let's move to Fusion. When you open up Fusion, this is what it looks like in the default view. So in order to, um, I like to start everything with sketches. If at all possible, I like to base everything on a sketch. That way it's, it's easily uh, changeable, hence the uh, parametric uh, advantage of Fusion 360. So uh, you can either go to the sketch menu and 
pick the uh, line tool or you can hit the L key on your keyboard you're gonna select I'd prefer to select the uh, the bottom or the base plane click once and then you automatically start a sketch from that point so if you'll select the center and I, I typically like to start in the center click and then drag your line now you can enter your uh, dimension now and in this case it's uh, 60.35 hit enter and then your next dimension which we can't remember but it won't matter because we're going to dimension the whole thing anyway so we'll just go ahead and draw this out real quick and then close it off so you can get out of the uh, line tool by hitting the escape key on the keyboard and we'll go ahead and uh, go ahead and dimension this up a little bit so we'll, you can hit go to sketch and select the dimension tool uh, or you can use the command uh, key on the keyboard D as in Delta for dimension uh, and that'll work too so we'll start with uh, I guess here and here and that dimension is six millimeters as is this one Oops, six millimeters and we'll dimension from here to here which is 13.99 all right so we've got our basic sketch outline dimension so now we don't need to place some holes now what I found was the holes that run the two holes that run along this plane here this section are smack in the middle the hole that is here that runs along this section is not so what we can do an easy way to get the holes smack in the middle here is to create a, um, a construction line down this plane here so we're going to hit the escape key to get it out of the dimensioning tool and then hit the L on the L key on the keyboard and when you roll over the center there's a little triangle that pops up so go once that triangle pops up click and then just bring it down so you see this little symbol here right there and we are good to go now from here we can either uh, right click and then convert it because it's a normal line now if we select this it'll turn it into a construction line as you can see it turned an orange dotted line so now anything we place along this this center here on this line will be centered so let's hit the C on the, the keyboard for circle and we'll just zoom in a little bit here doesn't matter where you're gonna place it we're gonna dimension them in a second so the diameter now I'm using ABS and with a small print like this I find that I've got to go more than normal so I would normally go 0 0.22 uh, diameter bigger than the screw or the bolt in this case we're using a three millimeter bolt uh, but what I found was that with these smaller prints the actual uh, area needed is actually needs to be higher so in this case this would be 3.54 and that works quite well we'll place another one 3.5 oops 3.54 again and again it doesn't matter where along this line is right now we'll dimension them in a second and we need another one here now this one remember this one's not actually in the center of this section so we'll just place one and dimension it later so 3.54 all right so let's go ahead and uh, dimension our circles which will turn into holes once we extrude it so again hit the D on the keyboard 
and we'll dimension this circle to this edge. And that is eight millimeters. And then we will dimension this circle to this circle. And that one was 34.80. Now these two are all done. This one we're gonna need two dimensions since we're not in the center. So we'll take the first one and we'll dimension it here, which is 2.90. And then we'll go from this side to this side, which we are 6.81. So now that we've got our holes dimensioned and our extension perimeter dimension, we can go ahead and extrude this. So click anywhere inside the, um, ex the um, drawing, right click and select extrude. And in this case, we can you can drag the uh, distance up or you can enter it. In this case, we want 25 millimeters. And there you have it. There is the extension piece for the camera cage. So kind of uh, the, the actual aluminum is contoured. The corners are contoured a little bit. So what we're going to do is fill it these corners, get rid of these sharp edges. And what you can do is just select the corner, can hit the uh, and hold down the control key and select all the other edges that you want to fill it. Once you reach the last one, right click on it, select fill it. And you can use the arrow to choose the amount of fillet, or you can enter it in here. And I think 1.5, 1.5 looks pretty good. All right, and we're done. So what we want to do now is go to the bodies. And then when you highlight over a body, it'll highlight the body in blue. So you know that that's the body you're on. Right click on it select save as STL so select uh, OK and I'm going to send this directly to the mesh mixer you can send it to whatever uh, program you like using uh, so we obviously don't want to print it like that so we uh, we can go ahead and transform it go to rotate tab and then we'll select the x-axis and that looks good and we'll hit move to platform hit select done and then you can hit export and I'll send it to my 3d project folder as you can see it took me uh, a total of four revisions on the fifth one was the, uh, the final one the, the perfect one so we'll go ahead and just name this test. And there you have it. It's ready to be sent into your favorite slicer. I personally use Simplify 3D. Uh, it's well worth the uh, $150 that it costs, in my opinion. So, and you don't, you don't need to actually send this um, from uh, fusion to mex mesh mixer rather you can uh, export it directly out as an STL um, you just unclick this or unselect this uh, send to 3d print utility and it'll just save it um, to wherever you want it to be saved okie doke that's it Assembly is straightforward in this case. Uh, once the print is completed, the really only prep work that you'll need to do is to uh, clear out the holes a little bit. And I use this Cobalt file kit. I think I, in this um, quick release Cobalt handle. 
they're, they're available separately. I think I got it um, pretty cheap, under $30 uh, for both. Um, and it was on sale, I believe. So basically what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to open up these holes a little bit. The, you'll, you'll most likely find that the holes on the side of the print that print to the that are printed on the bed are going to be narrower than the top and that's because the the first few layers kind of squish down and uh, create a little narrowing of the holes so basically all you do is run twist and run the uh, file through depending on the size file you have and just do that for all of them you don't have a file that fits like this one does perfectly in the, in the uh, hole don't worry about it just widen the very ends because that's all you'll need to do and that's pretty much it just be careful of the pokey end once the uh, the holes are cleared out it's really just simple to assemble all you're really going to want to do is look at the top identify the recessed areas in the top where the bolts go through drive the bolts through the top into the uh, extensions into the um the plastic extensions and into the arms just get everything lined up and then just start screwing it down now it'll probably be tight at least it was in my case as you can see but uh just take your time Keep maneuvering the pieces and eventually uh, they'll, they'll lock into place. So what do you think? Pretty easy, right? So with some patience, I now have a working cage that I would not have otherwise been able to easily modify. If you have any questions about this project or ideas on how I could have done it better, leave them in the comments. If you found this episode helpful, slap a like onto it. If not, Give it a thumbs down, but tell me why. Go into the comments and tell me why you didn't like it. As I said before in the, the last episode, I've got some exciting things on tap for my subscribers. So be sure to subscribe if you're not already, so you'll be notified of the future videos. You're not going to want to miss some of my hacking shenanigans. So until next time, guys, see ya.